It's 11 trivia questions on the year 1970. Let's see how many you know. This is Trivia with Buds. What it be and welcome to another episode of the Trivia with Buds podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Buds. Thanks for checking out my show. Now in YouTube form, you can watch and you can listen and you can have fun playing along with your friends, your family, your coworkers, however you enjoy the show, it's up to you. But thanks for checking it out. Hit subscribe so you never miss a new episode every single day on your phone or on YouTube. That would be very, very cool of you. And if you wanna help me out and do something that just takes you a couple minutes and helps the show grow quite a bit, you can leave an iTunes review. I would really appreciate that. And that helps get more eyes and ears on the show in a very quick and easy way. People uh, have been leaving a lot of reviews lately where they mention they play with their families. So I've been trying not to swear, not that I swear a ton anyway, but I am conscious of that. So I'm trying to make sure that the shows remain family friendly. So if you're looking for uh, something you can listen to on a road trip or on your way to school or work, hopefully this is that show. Today we have 1970 trivia, all specifically about that year, and this was for a big party I did on New Year's Eve for a couple of people who turned 50 named Masha and Carl. My friend Matt, who I did a company party for around uh, the summertime of 2019, hit me up and he said, hey, can you uh, come do just like a half hour of trivia on New Year's Eve at this restaurant in Santa Monica? And I said, sure. So I get to this restaurant. It's pretty jam-packed. Um, there's probably 60 guests at this party sitting at five or six tables. And uh, they are pretty dressed up, and they have a big ball drop thing, and uh, they're eating very fancy food, and there's a DJ. And I'm like, oh, this is way crazy. I thought this was going to be like a dinner party for eight people, and it was like uh, more of a big shindig. So when I first got to the party, I looked around, and I'm like, that guy looks really familiar. And it was no other than Cheech Marin from Cheech and Chong. So Cheech was at this party as one of the guests. And I said to the DJ, I said, did you uh, see that, that Cheech Marin's here? He goes, yeah, he was the first one here. And I thought, holy cow, that's crazy. So I might have mentioned this on the podcast a couple days ago, but I didn't talk about the party itself. Uh, so after I went up, I took off, but they had some Russian dancers coming in because uh, one of the guests of honor, my is Russian. So they had a DJ, they had trivia, they had Russian dancers. It was a crazy party. But I took this round that I wrote on 1970 for the birthday boy and girl, and uh, I decided to make it into a podcast for today. So hopefully you get something out of this 11 questions on the year 1970. If you're watching on YouTube, you will see some bingo dabbers that I'm pointing to right now. And these bingo dabbers are to showcase that we do bingo every Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific time right here in Southern California in San Dimas, California at High Point Brewing, which is the big logo behind me. I'm recording right here in one of my favorite breweries in all the land. And uh, we supply all the bingo dabbers. We have all the bingo cards. We do number bingo. We do music bingo. We do picture bingo. We do trivia bingo. And it's tons of fun. We give away uh, beer offers, uh, snacks, swag, coffee, t-shirts, stickers, you name it, whatever's in my trunk, we make sure to give it out to people who like pop culture stuff. So, Come play every Sunday, 5 to 7 p.m. I'm usually hosting it myself. And if I'm not here, if I'm at a a double booked event, I usually have one of the other great hosts in my arsenal taken over for me. You can find all the details and location info at my website, triviawithbuds.com. All right, we're going to jump into 11 questions on the year 1970 right now. Here we go. Here we go with 1970 trivia question number one. What three-word Beatles album was their last to be released as a group in May of 1970? Question number one, what three-word Beatles album was the last to be released as a group in May of 1970? Question number two, what president lowered the voting age from 21 to 18 in June of 1970? What president lowered the voting age from 21 to 18 in June of 70? Question number three, who won their third World Cup in 1970? Who won their third World Cup back in 1970? Question number four, what popular war-related film of 1970 later became a hit TV sitcom? 
Question number four, what show and film were that? Question number five, what SNL star and writer of the memoir Bossy Pants was born in 1970? What SNL star and writer of the memoir Bossy Pants was born in 1970? Question number six, LCD technology was invented in the year 1970. What does LCD stand for? Question number seven, what was the average cost of a gallon of gas in 1970? Was it 16 cents, 26 cents, or 36 cents? Nice multiple choice question for you. 16, 26, or 36 cents for a gallon of gas in 1970. Question number eight, what baseball team with stinky initials won the MLB championship in 1970? What baseball team with stinky initials won in 1970? Question number nine, what feline-friendly Disney film was released in 1970? What feline-friendly Disney film was released that year? Two questions left to go on this 1970s quiz. Number 10, who had the most popular rendition of all time of Ain't No Mountain High Enough back in 1970? Who had one of the most popular renditions of all time of Ain't No Mountain High Enough in that year? And your bonus question for two points. Sally drinks milk in Gordon and Susan's apartment, and Carol Burnett talks about Wanda the Witch. Were two scenes found in what kids show that debuted in late 1969 and flourished into popularity in the 70s? What was the name of that show? Those are all your questions for the 1970 trivia quiz for today. We'll be right back in just a second with the groovy answers. We're back with the answers to 1970 trivia. Let's see how many of these you got right. Question number one. What three-word Beatles album was their last to be released as a group in May of 1970? That would, of course, be Let It Be. Let It Be. Number two. What president lowered the voting age from 21 to 18 in June of 1970? That was Richard Nixon. Nixon was president then. Number three. Which country won their war, a third World Cup back in 1970? That was Brazil. Brazil back in the Pele days. Number four, what popular war-related film of 1970 later became a TV sitcom? That was MASH. And if you love MASH, we did a whole episode on MASH on yesterday's theme. So go back and listen to yesterday's episode if you like MASH. Got uh, 10 more questions on the show from Ian Schultz. Number five, what SNL star and writer of the memoir Bossy Pants was born in 1970? That would be Miss Tina Fey. That's a great book. I listened to the audio book of that and it was really, really funny. Number six, LCD technology was invented in 1970. What does it stand for? Liquid Crystal Display. LCD, Liquid Crystal Display. I used to work in the home theater department of Best Buy. I Still couldn't tell you anything about TVs or car audio where they stuck me next. Number seven, what is the average cost of a gallon of gas in 1970? It was the highest choice, 36 cents. 36 cents back then. Number eight, what baseball team with stinky initials won the championship in 1970s? That would be B.O., the Baltimore Orioles. B.O. Hopefully I don't have it right now. Number nine, what feline-friendly Disney film was released in 1970? That was the Aristocats. The Aristocats, I think one of the... Uh, least entertaining of all the Disney animated movies, but that's just me. Number 10, who had one of the most popular renditions of all time of Ain't No Mountain High Enough in 1970? Miss Diana Ross. Diana Ross. And for two points, Sally drinks milk in Gordon and Susan's apartment, and Carol Burnett talks about Wanda the Witch, were two scenes from Sesame Street, which debuted a year before the 70s in 1969, but flourished into popularity in that decade. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for playing along with today's episode. I do have notes on the piece of paper I'm reading off of uh, from the trivia party I did that I mentioned in the intro on New Year's Eve. And the team that won was called Tallest Guys Team. That was Cheech Marin's team that I mentioned earlier. Then we had a team called Hot Carl. We had a team called From Russia With Love. We had a team called Two for Terminator. And then we had a team simply called Table Number Four. So I just wanted to share those weird team names with you from this party. It's time for the question of the day. One last question in the form of the question of the day. Whose 90s album was known as a miseducation? Tweet me your answer at Ryan Buds or email ryanbuds at gmail.com to be eligible for a prize. Yesterday's question of the day answer was A Few Good Men. For the quote, you can't handle the truth. What was that from? A Few Good Men. 
And your trivia team name of today is Bounty Hunter Paper Towels. So Bounty Paper Towels, throw the word Hunter in there, and then you're like a Boba Fett. There you go. Use that one next time you play trivia somewhere out and about. Thank you guys for listening to the show. Thanks for telling a friend about this podcast, and we'll see you tomorrow for more Trivia with Buds. Cheers.